Hello and welcome to Tea Time on Plus TV Africa, where we bring to you the biggest entertainment news and, of course, analyze them for you. I am Ife Oluwa Oshunke, and with me is Ife Omai. What's good? Mm -hmm. How are you doing today? Mm -hmm. Looking very, you know, what's the word now? Responsible. As I am. What's the occasion? Being responsible. Being responsible. <laughs> How dull to this telling on you? <laughs> yeah, I begin to act like one. <laughs> I hope you okay. So there was this thing I saw on the internet yesterday, mm -hmm. um, and it was by if you see Fallahi. Coincidentally, we spoke about her earlier yeah, yeah, yeah. today. Um, yesterday, I know what you were saying. Yeah, mm -hmm. and she posted that uh, you should never ask a woman um, how was your night. That it is very rude to ask a woman how was your night. I really don't understand because I went through all her comments trying to see if I'll get a reasonable explanation. So I said, okay, I'll just ask you fair tomorrow. Um, I did the same thing, <laughs> to be very honest. You went through all the comments? I went to look, because I, I didn't see it on her page. I saw it on at one of the other Blog. blogs. So I went through the comments for someone to, maybe Explain. they, yeah, they got it. Um, I have no idea what she's talking about. I, I mean, I can, I can imagine that this is obviously personal to her. Like, maybe something goes on in her nights. Like, maybe she doesn't sleep well, or she has... Or they, maybe not her. Maybe there's women who go through, go through certain things, things uh, yeah. you know, that they can't sleep or whatever. So I'm guessing it's a personal thing. Um, but to say that it is offensive to ask women in general whether their night was good... <laughs> There's nothing wrong with me, that. I'm wondering, like, no, so I got different explanations, but there was one that I'm trying to make sense. That, you know, when it's still not making sense, yeah, but, yeah, saying, yeah. but it's okay, cooking, yeah. Yeah, let me just mm. see if I can just run with this. They said, um, I was your knight is something that intimate partners ask each other. Ah. Do you understand? Then, did you sleep well? Is what the general public should be asking. Like, what in the world? <laughs> <laughs> so, so how was your night is an intimate question. I mean, I, I, I can that. get that. I can get that. It would be kind of weird if a stranger asked me, how was my night? Like, it would be weird, but it wouldn't be offensive. But why would it be weird, though? How well, was your night? Good. Oh, no, it was cold. Oh. Because so, am I really going to tell you? You see, you know, even pleasantries in general are a waste of time. Because even when you ask me, how are you? It's like, do you really want to know how yeah, I am? Because you could because be, you could I be, could be really bad. Your worst thing I'm telling you, yeah, and I know you're not interested in knowing how I am. You're just being polite. So if that's what she's saying, then everything, even even um, 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 how was your day, can be offensive, mm -hmm. and uh, how was your outing could be offensive. How if, do you do? How do you do? Could how be was offensive. Amazing. Heck, it could be offensive. So, <laughs> if, that, if that's what they're talking about, I, just calm down, Abig. It's not that deep. It to, really to be offensive, that word offensive was like, girl, what are you on about? And then also when she said women, I'm like, girl, what why are you on about? Me, eh, eh. I'm like, okay. Why? Please ask me how do you my think night that was. We try to create problems where there are no problems, especially in this part of the world. Mm. In the world at large, say, Africa, it's not even about Nigeria now. I think in the world where there are no problems, we always try to put a problem there. Because right now, men will be very conscious and some women will still run with it mm. and still tell you that, don't ask me how my night was. Don't ask me how that. I'm sure this will be an ongoing conversation for a long time. You know, right? How was your night is a rude question to ask a woman. I think it's who who's asking. I think it's who's asking. I can't imagine. So who would ask you that it would be rude to you? For example, let's say you want to do business with me. For example, I don't know who you are. Hey, I, I, I got your contact from some 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 something, and then maybe the conversation doesn't finish, and then the next day you ask me how was my night. I don't even think I'll answer it. I'll just say okay. So what are we doing about? Da, 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 da. I mean, if, if you're in the corporate space, or even not even just a corporate space, if you're interacting with with People men, don't really know. if you're interacting with men in regards to business, um, I'm always a little more firm because it's. It's, but what we're living in this world. How does it connote? How does it connote anything that it connotes um, familiarity, which is not necessary all the time. I don't think you need to know how my night was. What are you expecting for me to say was fine? Cold. I don't know. If that's what she's insinuating, I think I, I get that as well. There's no need to be asking me how's my. Oh, oh, it's like when when. <laughs> yes. I'm hoping I can get her on the show to you know shed some light on this. Yeah, I mean men do that a lot. Even with the, I mean when I first came into the this office, I remember I used to always shut it down like i'll say they'll say oh good morning if i'll say oh, good morning how are you darling like no sweetheart i am not your darling no that's no, condescending that's no. different some people argue that it's not that they're not being condescending that they're being nice or whatever and i think it's the same approach to 
how was your night for depending on who is being um, mm -hmm. addressed to. So if I'm trying to be taken seriously here as an equal, are you going to ask, honestly speaking, would you ask a man that's a stranger how his night was? Yeah. Yeah. yeah? How was your night? How you doing? How was your night? Did you sleep well? It's basically you ask another a guy that, side of did you sleep well? Yes. Now why wouldn't so I ask a guy that, that you don't know that you want to do business with? Why would I ask a guy I don't know that? That's what she's saying. She's saying asking a woman. She did not say a woman you are not okay, close me, to. Okay, me I'm saying. She's I mean, okay, saying okay, no, no. Okay. Your explanation is different. Ours I'm is, asking is now if uh, if good. would you ask a man that you don't have a relationship with that you need to do business with how his night After was? After good morning, how are you doing? That's where we stop. Okay, good. Do you understand? That's where we will stop. But if it's somebody I'm used to, like somebody I saw the day before, yeah. of course I'll ask you, how was your night? Or did you sleep well? Yeah, you answered my question. I'm, just, I'm trying to build a theory here around the fact that if it's from a stranger, it can be offensive. So if you can't tell a woman that, if you can't tell a man that you don't really know and have no business with and you're not, you're not cordial. I don't think I'll ask a stranger woman, how was your night? Exactly. That's the thing. I wouldn't ask her. But exactly. if, we are, if we're colleagues, if we're friends, or we're oh, my yeah, neighbor, definitely. or yeah. I see you hopping, yeah. I'll definitely ask yeah, you, definitely. how was your night? Yeah. Do you understand? Yeah. So, but a stranger, what's my business with your night? Exactly. So that was, I, I don't even know what you were up to all yeah. through the night, so why would I be asking yeah. you, how was your night? Yeah. But if I feel like I have a clue of what you may have been up to, then I, I if, don't If you and I talk, I can ask you. Someone even asked me this morning how my week has been going. Like, we're not that close. We're not close, but we're friendly and you see, that, that for me is okay. Like, oh, how's your weekend? It was well, thank you. Even though I know I'm not going to tell you, okay, so Monday, this is what happened. And mm -hmm. Tuesday was a bit tough, or Wednesday was great, you know. But it, it was a decent question. But if you that was coming from one, somebody else, I wouldn't like it. How was your night? Good. What did you do? Ah. Uh, that is very offensive. Okay, now I'm pushing now, that it. that one is very, very I'm pushing offensive. it. You don't know people do that. How was your night? Great. What did you do? Mm -mm. Yeah. But, 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 oh, but hey, what did I do? Uh, what kind of stupid question is that? <laughs> <laughs> but well, that it happens sometimes. All right, so let's move on. I think we've trashed this out, and um, mm -hmm. I hope I can get Yemisi Fala maybe tomorrow Actually. to shed some light on mm. this and, and you know tell what us why it's offensive yeah. and all of that. So maybe we can be schooled. So for the rest of today, to you, we bring out on the show. Don't ask anybody how was your night, just keep it simple and keep As it moving. Big and yeah? <laughs> Before you chop slap today, because right. <laughs> Now, the internet is on fire over this post alone. All right, so our first story for the day, like you know, we like to analyze. You cannot have faith in, in God and still take the vaccine. Mm. That's a tricky one. Now, this one is coming from um, a Twitter user, mm. Kalea or something. Yeah. Kalea. A Kalea. Yeah, so what do mm. you guys think? Like, Oh, you guys, sorry. I'm, I'm so know, I'm, I'm one in many. I'm a lot yeah, more. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, so to, back I'm back. so used to any being with us. I'm so what do you lot. think? What do you think? I mean, according to scriptures, I can understand where she's coming from in mm. regards to faith. I mean, that's how faith works in general. It's mm. a hope for something not seen. Ah, oh, gosh, I've really lost touch. Ha! Oh. <laughs> I should have to say this thing like... <laughs> anyway, I'm telling you, um, uh, yeah, something about, you know, not really seeing and believing and trusting and all of that. And if you're working in the spiritual um, realm now, if that's how you live your life, I can understand how, like, some people would not you know, take drugs and you want to use prayers or, you know, things like that. So I can understand where she is coming from in that regard. Um, but that's now me being extremely unbiased and looking at it from this, from the Scriptural. context in which, in which she's working in. From my perspective, I don't work in that context. I don't use faith. I mean, I have faith. I'm not going to say I'm a faithless person, but um, it's not in the same... Uh, it doesn't function in the same manner as most religious people. And I'm trying to remember a scripture since you've been talking, but go on. <laughs> I don't walk by faith. I walk by faith and not by sight. No, 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 no. Okay. No. Go on. Um, but so for me, it's a bit, it's a bit careless. Mm. This reminds me of a conversation around uh, vaccines for children. It's mm. a huge debate in places like America because um, a lot of religious people don't want to take the vaccine that they mm -hmm. give children in America, and some do. And there is a huge disparity between that. That now the government has now cited the the vac pro vaccine people and said if your kids don't take the vaccine, they don't come into society um, because they're going to affect the other kids that have the taken the risk of taking. Because mm -hmm. there is a risk of taking vaccines, mm -hmm. right? So I think that's the same thing I'm going to respond to her, which is which will be my take. 
is that while you work, you, you walk rather in this spiritual faith and context and all of that, you must create that society <laughs> and stay there. Mm -hmm. You must stay there, as in like build a your own house. Yes, as in like if you can if you can find a way to stay there, then I'm all right. What are the risks though? Because I've been hearing that that if you don't take the vaccine, if you take it, what are the risks of taking a vaccine? Do you know? I mean, there, there is always um, risks with vaccines because it is a, a foreign body that you're putting. It's kind mm. of like medicine. If you take even painkillers, they'll tell you you're, you're most likely to get throw up symptoms, da -da 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 -da, rashes, in, hormonal imbalance and all of that. So there are clauses to vaccines. Mm. I'm not sure exactly which one and is to, to, applicable to, to COVID-19 COVID vaccines, vaccine. but... And people, people around, around the world have taken it and mm. they've, they've moved on with life and some haven't. Some, there was a nurse that even fainted on TV and all of that. But the point is, we have a pandemic. It's highly contagious. Mm -hmm. It has stopped the world. Mm -hmm. This is the only thing we've got that would probably that would make, make it, it better. better. Yes. It, I think it's your global duty um, to do your research um, and, and, and make the decision that is best for yourself and everybody else around you. And I don't know what that is, but if everybody's taking a vaccine and you're not, then it's, it's simple math to know that you're a threat to other people in society. I always say this, no matter what your, your belief is, your, your opinions and options and decisions, if it's starting to affect somebody else, I have a problem with it. All and right. this, affects, this affects other people. Like, if you say to me that, oh, you don't like gay people, for example, I'm like, that's really cool. But then if you're not taking it into politics and say, I'm going to vote for, for the government that would trash on somebody else's or, um, choice Sexuality. to live, then you're, you're being a bit much because you've taken your own opinion as superior over another person's. Mm. This kind of decision also speaks like that. Like, mm. yes, faith, Christian, whatever you want to call yourself. I don't want to do that, da, 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 Yes, but is it going to affect other people? Absolutely, yes. So then there is a problem. All right, so I think um, I'm going to start with giving an example. I, I asked my dad, like, I think a week or two ago, and I asked him that, is he going to take the vaccine as soon as it's available? And he said, in fact, if they tell him that he's around the corner right now, he will go and take it. And my dad has a lot of faith. He believes in God, right? So I think when I saw this, I was like, it, it reminded me of the scripture as well. Faith without works is... Nothing. You don't know that scripture. Do you? I told you the scripture. Faith when you were asking works, what scripture you were looking for, I asked okay, you. Okay, so please complete it. Faith without works is dead. Is dead, exactly. Yeah. So I think that comes with faith as well. Now, I have faith that if I take this vaccine, I'm not going to get the COVID-19. It is not guaranteed, you know, right? It's not like it's 100%. Mm. I hope you know that. Yeah, but it's pretty it's, strong. You it's pretty strong, but it's mm. not like it's 100%. So, Nothing is 100%. Yeah, so I think God has put the vaccine there as for us to... I don't know how to put it now. Yeah. I just feel like it is still part of the faith because it is the work that has been put into it. Now, the person who created the vaccine did not get the knowledge from themselves. They got it from God. Mm. Do you get where I'm coming from? So mm. if this knowledge is from God and God made somebody create this vaccine, then God has a reason for it. It's, it's, it may be man-made, but the knowledge is from the Almighty. Hallelujah. Do you understand where I'm coming from? Rabbi. So I don't like when religious people just try to bring their religion and try to trample on everybody because of their religion. Now, if something happens, God forbid, happens to this person tomorrow and this person gets COVID-19 or loses a dear person to COVID-19, mm -hmm. what is she going to say? Oh, that was religion. God's will. How many people has the church healed from COVID-19? How many people have, as any man of God, laid his hand upon? You haven't had enough faith Fair. Do you know how you many men of God faith. have died? If you died? have enough faith, the God that rose Jesus Christ from the dead after three days or four days. And so they, we should die first. <laughs> no, no, we should die first. <laughs> <laughs> is uh, that what they want? Do you remember my take that I said to you that um, God is a design? This is a clear example of that. Yeah. You see, even what you just did now, for me, in my opinion, is a design. You work that way, you think that way. So you create God's analysis and, and, and commandments and scripture and doctrine in the way that suits you. And because you're a lot more open-minded and educated, you'll find a way that, work, that, mm. that, that works for you. This person is obviously a lot more extreme. I can bear with you that she has other extreme um, philosophies as well that rules her life. And she just added God and created that context for herself as well. She will stand by it and give you scriptures. And that's why one of the things I actually love about the Bible, that you can 
you can bend that thing. It to you See, you can bend that scripture and save the world saw, or saw, kill the world, and the Bible will be able to defend both things. I saw things. a very so, deep quote yesterday, you know, and somebody said that you want to know how you became slaves by taking the religion of the person who put you in chains and still, and, and by taking the religion of the person who put you in chains and say they brought you salvation. Hmm. Do you understand? And that's I'm like, deep. that's how you became slaves. That is deep. And I started thinking about it. And once again, I went to the comment section and I was following the conversation. You know, people mm. were replying to people's comments. People were, I was like, whoa. Mm. Some people had, you know, everybody mm. wants to stay away from that table. Mm. But the white man who put me in chain was the same person who brought me salvation. Mm -hmm. And you're expecting me, or you're saying it would not work in their favor in some type of way to are you, put... Like, to, are you kidding? To put me in some mental slave position. Do you understand? Position. Fair? No, it's a mental slave. Now, we're not doing the physical. That was, that we're was, not picking fam. curtains anymore. We're not getting whipped anymore. Now, it is mental slavery. Mm. And that is even worse. Emancipate yourself, from people. From mental slavery. Yes. Hallelujah. Oh, now that's that my, one, my no. preaching right there. Yeah. Absolutely. Like, I feel like it's very, it's very unfortunate that, um, you know, because I think religion can be used as a really beautiful thing. I've mm. seen it transform people's lives and save the wretched people and create them, create them into something. But um, it, it, it's, I, I, know, I know people might come for me for this, but I don't really think that was even in, this, in the religion itself. It was about that person. Like, that person was able to use that tool like that. And I think maybe that's my issue with it. Because when religion falls into the wrong hands, it becomes and, and this look chaotic at it. thing. The people who, I think it's Ethiopia, right? I think it should be, um, if I'm correct now, that they, there's no form of, you know, colonization. Yeah. There's no, it's Ethiopia, well, yeah, right? Ethiopia and, and then you see that they, well. they are a lot better the way they live their lives. I, I don't know, but yeah. I just feel like they live a more natural life compared to every other place that was colonized or even the Western world that we all want to go to. In some then, aspects, yes. Yeah, in some aspects. Yeah. yeah, of course, you can't say, oh, sometimes yeah. they live very ratchet, you know? Yeah, and they have issues. Though. <laughs> yeah, they have their own colorist, issues. Yeah. I'm not going to say, I'm not going to deny that, but I'm just saying that they live a very natural Of course, I mean, the life, first time I very... went to Ethiopia, the first thing I noticed that there were no women wearing weaves. Mm. Nobody was wearing weaves, if eh? nobody. Everybody had their hair out like that. Mm. So that, for me, already was showing that there isn't any Western colonization of, you mm -hmm. must have straight hair, you must have baby hair. Mm -hmm. If your hair is curly, you wear it like that, and they mm -hmm. all seemed fine, even like the biggest babes mm -hmm. just the natural the natural hair out even the way they dress and all of that but anyway Sha, my point with this conversation is i, I would advise K K kalea is do some more research mm -hmm. do some more research it, i'm not gonna lie to you i'm not very comfortable with the vaccine just yet we all end like i'm not i'm not gonna lie i'm, I'm not gonna be like your dad and go and get it right now even when it comes you like to see I someone will, who has taken an observed that person yeah, for three months yeah, like, <laughs> we, we all need a lab rat you understand like, how, how, you, how you faring baby girl and i'm even trying to find somebody that's a lot like me yeah like i'll need representation even to get more comfortable like is a person like me, does person have my health challenges, my freaking DNA, my blood type? Uh, then three months after, I'm not asking, babe, how far are you? Do you remember me? Are, you, are your fingers working? Do they move right? You know, mm. all of that stuff before I can feel more comfortable. So I'll say to her, like, do some more research. And I think your example would maybe help influence her a bit better that look at it in a different way because God is a lot bigger than that. He's not, I don't think he's the kind of, he has that esteem that he'll be threatened or offended that you trusted a mm -hmm. vaccine yeah. that he allowed to create. You pray to God, God, take away COVID-19 from our world. Take away COVID-19. And then he gives, then you, the he gives you a vaccine. And then you're not saying, no, it's so what not. Does she want us to do? She want no, us to they want God to come down from heaven and make a... I a, swear. A, a, <laughs> Or maybe we should keep shit. on social like, distancing for the rest of our lives. You know, or just... continue wearing a face mask. Like, like I don't even know which girl is beautiful anymore. No. It's so painful, yeah, you know, because yeah. everybody's in a mask. And then you actually want me to get married huh. because you're trying to approach somebody and then she takes off a mask and then you discover she has a bad dentition and she has a bad breath. And she's, <laughs> do you understand? Those things are fake now. We have braces. We have, you know, uh, little... Or she's not, she doesn't look good. You know, some people have very cute eyes, but not a very cute face. But everybody <laughs> was made in God's image and God is not Again your ugly God. Oh, yeah, <laughs> Again, yeah, yeah. design, right? <laughs>
<laughs> Anyways, that's what it is. And uh, should we move on? Hold yeah. you want us to stay on this? Yeah. All right. So those who try to escape a poor past to quickly run the risk, um, quickly run the risk of perpetuating it. Do not raise your taste at the first sighting of a little increase. Poverty is not just a material, but also a mental phenomenon. It's not just a status, but also a culture. Femi Jacobs, and um, this is well said. Mm. Or what do you think? I feel like it, the, the context in which it was written didn't do justice to how deep he was insinuating. Like, what he's saying is really, really deep. And I, I, I don't know, maybe it's because... He didn't it, write it I just deep, feel like there was... Deep enough. I, no, it was deep, but I feel like... Ah, the tweets never allow it to slap as hard as it yeah. should because obviously it's a tweet and you can't really... Like this kind of thing, you can unpack and make a book out of it is what I'm trying to say. Like it's really, really deep. And I don't know if people... I hope people caught on to what he was really saying. Like if you break down those words, like talking about mental slave... Um, like poverty being a uh, mental... A mindset problem yeah. or whatever. It's, it's deep. A it's, it's a, that's a conversation you can have for like two an days. Hour. I'm telling you. So <laughs> like, yeah. But everything he was saying obviously makes a lot of sense. Like for instance, I'm, okay, I always have examples. I know this neighbor in Ghana, right? So because um, they say when you put your car for too long, it, it makes your tire go flat. So if this man is not going anywhere for two days, it will get them to come and raise his car so that the tire is not touching the floor because he doesn't want the car affected. And, they, and I'm wondering, and this guy is very comfortable. Do you understand? So you get people to come like the following, they come and raise the car from the ground. They will see men struggling, putting stones, and when he wants to go out, they will do the same struggle to bring it down. Now that man has raised his taste from a little bit of money that he got, or a better job offer, but you can always take a boy out of the village. You can never take the village out of the mm. boy. Do you understand? It will still be behaving that way mm. because either I'm well educated, informed, and um, I'm 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 not used to that type of lifestyle. That's why it's looking absurd to me. But somebody else will say, "Ah, you are doing the right thing, you know? Ah, Save don't let it spoil. Yeah. Don't, ah, the, the money you go and used to. But it's just two days. It's just three days. Maybe if you leave it for like four months, yes, your tires would definitely go down. We sit down on the streets of Lagos, but it's not immediately, <laughs> now, my guy. Do you understand? And then also, a lot of people. This also applies to um, when you suddenly taste money and mm. you think that it's all good mm. you raise your taste your your the way you live is different you don't want to eat what you used to mm. you don't want to go to the places you used to god forbid something happens how will you be able to adjust those are mm. the ones that are frustrated so you have to it's it's, it's a gradual thing S stay in touch with your roots while you're going up do you understand? Mm. And if possible, move as many people from your roots while up with mm. you when you are going. Yeah. So it doesn't look like you are the local champion. Yeah. Because that way, they will still come and disgrace you. Yeah. Do you understand? Your yeah. roots will come back to bite you. They will, still, they will still do something. Imagine you want to have a wedding and then you now bring your family members. <laughs> Now, you are a big man in the mm. society. You have um, very well-spoken friends. Then you now bring the people from your roots to that same place. What happens? So the more you try to escape it so quickly, mm. I think it, you, you actually run at a very big risk of perpetuating it. For yeah, real, for I mean, real. I have to agree. I think exposure and contentment have been two things for me personally that have helped me um, to stay grounded and mm. remove the mindset of poverty uh, mentality. And I'll say exposure because exposure is basically um, knowledge, is how you gain the knowledge. Like sometimes you don't know better, right? Until you are exposed to other other kinds of people, people who are less than you, people who are the same as you, people who are better than you, people who have different temperaments, mm. people who have different jobs, people who have different personalities, then you can start to see that there's so many ways to do this life mm. thing. Mm -hmm. There's so many ways to handle money. Mm. You'll meet the guy that has a lot of money but doesn't retain anything. That he, he's been able to make, um, he's been able to position himself in a way where he earns a lot. But he doesn't reserve. Mm. And he says, you can see that the lifestyle is different. And then you see the ones that earn a lot but know how to reserve. Or the ones that don't earn enough but know how to reserve. Mm. Like, you can see, like, there's different kinds of people. Just, mm. And that only happens when you have exposure. 
Mm. Because I think the poverty mentality comes from fear of not having. Like, if you're not confident in the fact that money is going to come, and this is how you're supposed to use money and invest in money and cultivate money to, to make it work for you, then you, you act in panic. And I was like that. I was thinking I was like that in my, all of my uni, uni life because I got hungry one time and I'm like, yeah, I don't want to get hungry again. So yeah. like, I'm always like holding on to money and oh my gosh, oh my gosh. And then you know, I meet somebody else who is like, also, a, yeah, and then you realize, oh, she has this business there and she has this thing there and she saves a lot mm -hmm. and she's planned everything and she uses a budget app and then she da 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 da. All those kind of things help me to learn that. So I'll say exposure. And then contentment is another thing. Big one. A very big one. And I, I don't know, that, I think that one has, is something the supreme. that. Supreme, above all of it. It is. And I'm very grateful that. I don't know what it is that made me like that, but I'm prob I can see that a lot of people struggle with contentment and mm. I don't. Mm. I don't. I sometimes I even worry that even I'm not comparing them. You're yeah. comparing yourself mm. to other people. Sometimes, sometimes I worry that is everything okay with me because I'm not as like, oh yeah, which I want and oh my gosh, let me. Oh, I think you're perfectly okay. So people that are doing, oh yeah, they're yeah. the ones that have the problem. Yeah. So I, I feel like that has never happened for me naturally. I've always just been able to be content, and I think it's because the things that make me happy mm. are not really founded in money. So mm. money is one of those things I remember that ah yeah, I actually need this thing because Top I have three things that make you happy people i right. actually like people mm -hmm. um people uh food <laughs> of course uh and myself without money okay great mm. i was gonna say without mentioning yeah money. myself i think i enjoy just exploring who i am and being in my space figuring out myself my temperament just honestly absorbing myself like i i enjoy that <laughs> mine is people sex food <laughs> Those three things make me extremely... You know that we have to have this con conversation <laughs> about men and sex one day on this table. Why? Because I, I got a very interesting See, discovery. women like sex more than those, so no! you guys don't talk about no, 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 no. I got a big discovery mm. on Twitter yesterday. Mm. And I said, this person even went to my DM. I don't know who this person is, but I retweeted something and I was like, men are gross. Oh my gosh. Da, da, da. Because the man said, you know, if, please, if you want to go meet a girl, make sure you, I don't know if I can talk about it, but make sure you masturbate first before you go and see the girl so that you, so that you know where you, if you actually want to go see her. And to me, that was like really extreme because for women, it is very clear. Like we don't need to touch ourselves to know the difference, you know, like. I would know if I want to smash or not. I cannot, and sometimes I just want to chill. No, I think that man has a problem because if, I, don't, I don't think that that would stop it. There's a way that a woman would be built that <laughs> all the masturbation in the world, you still want to see her. <laughs> you <laughs> see, <laughs> you know, I, we, we started talking <laughs> in the DMs. And said, uh, anyway, I don't want to make this show about yeah, that conversation, yeah, but yeah, true. that's something we need to, I, we move need away to, from that we need to even have. You and I, I need to get men on this table. We need to talk about it, analyze mm. it, break it down. All right, all right. I will definitely oblige you because it's <laughs> something I love so much. <laughs> <laughs>